Quentin, many policies of OECD countries have quite an impact on the overall food security situation in developing countries. OECD and ECDPM have now taken the initiative to develop a methodology to measure this impact. It will focus at the impact of OECD countries' domestic policies as well as on their aid policy side. What motivated this initiative? What motivated the initiative is perhaps the realization that after 10 years or so efforts of PCB, our results have been a bit limited. And one of the biggest realizations is that, you know, it's because there's a, there's a lack of evidence. There's a lack of, of, of evidence and um, that showed up when we did a study earlier last year about the PCD system in various EU member states we found across the board that the weakest point was analysis and monitoring. And that becomes a problem when institutionally speaking, domestically speaking, in OECD countries, when people pass the PCD, go to other line ministries responsible for agricultural trade, etc., they're often short of evidence. And that's the first thing they're asked for is, okay, you're telling me that my policies have a negative impact, where do you get that from? And unless they have solid evidence, then they just can't make, make a case for development. And that's, that's the problem we're trying to address. OECD and ECDPM have held a workshop last week to discuss the draft methodology. What's been the most single most important outcome from your perspective of this workshop? The, the context of the workshop is that we had a draft ready, and we, we wanted to, to, to put it in front of experts and, and people that actually probably maybe will use it at some point to gather the feedback. Uh, when you're doing work like this, uh, it, it's always very good to have as much feedback as possible before you met uh, you finalize the draft, because eventually, you know, you hope that these people will actually use it and think it's relevant. So, so, so that was really the aim of the workshop. And I think a lot of, a lot of the comments boil down to how comprehensive of an exercise this is going to be. Um, obviously, we don't see this as a purely ECDPM or ECD product, as I said, we hope that other people will use it in the future. Um, and what that means is that we don't know how much resources is going to be put into it. So the way we dealt with the problem is, 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 is making the methodology very flexible. We provide a, a skeleton, modules, etc. What we try to do is say, if you take these five basic steps, no matter your amount of resources, analytical capacity, etc., you, you'll get as far as you can go with what you have. Um, so that's really what, was, and I think that's really a lot of the comments that we got at the workshop kind of revolved around that question, how comprehensive it's going to be, et cetera, and, 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 and the comments we, we had is just that we're trying to really provide a solid framework into which you can solve a lot of things in later. Let's think about after you've gained all this added knowledge, and probably including some hardcore figures that you get along the line. How do you then envision to, to influence this impact that these donor policies have on food security? First of all, I wouldn't talk about donor policies because the, the whole point of the, of the exercise is really to, um, to look at beyond aid policies. So, so having said that, to answer your question, I think it's one, it boils down to domestic institutional setup uh, in OECD countries that I just talked about in the first, uh, uh, just a while ago. Secondly, is the realization that PCD is political. So um, you can throw as much evidence as you want at these problems. Some of them involve just two big trade-offs to be, to be solved through, through evidence. But, and something I should have probably mentioned earlier, we don't see this see uh, solely as a tool by OECD, uh, for OECD governments to be used by OECD governments. We also see this as something that could be used by civil society partner governments in the South um, to kind of design response strategy because you can't always change OECD policy. Sometimes it's just not feasible. Sometimes it's just not even recommendable that these policies change. So then you have a second and third option, which are one, uh, partner country governments or developing country governments do something to mitigate the impact, and three, which are the people being affected themselves actually at that. Um, and sometimes that's these are the only options feasible. Of course, you can take all three, um, do all three at the same time. But to come back to the point, um, 
the thing is it will really have an impact if it generates buy-in from southern partners. So we really see this also to be done in, um, in collaboration with research institutes in the south with hopefully a strong buy-in from the local government so that people really internalize the findings and you know, either use it for a dog office or for designing uh, or, or for designing a response strategy. We know that there can be positive and negative effects of OECD policies on food security in developing countries, obviously. Could you give maybe one example that illustrates how the methodology can not only create awareness but also lead to some actions on the ground? Well, it's even more complicated than that because it's not some policies will be good, some policies will be bad. Even the same, one single policy in one country will have diverging effects. So it'll make some people uh, better off, some people worse off. So that, that, that's really some tricky issues we're dealing with here. So um, having said that, in terms of concrete examples, I think you, know, you have the policies, you have the usual success, so trade distorting subsidies, barriers to export, et cetera, that affect the income of people, so then they can buy less food in these communities, et cetera. But I think, as I said above, it can lead to action as much as it's internalized by the people who use it. So, um, you know, it can also help donor programming, for example, to make donor programming a bit more, a bit more helpful and, and aware and responsive of, uh, of the negative impacts of these policies. So I really think key to this is internalization and doing it uh, in, in partnership with southern local partners, with donors, with line ministries in the OECD countries, with their kind of backing and, and some kind of tacit acknowledgement that this is going on. So um, yeah, that, that, that would be key to, 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 make, to lead to some action later. You already spoke about donors uh, programming, and we're here with the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development. Um, what would you say in terms of um, what could contribute to the communication and uh, the creation and eventually application of the methodology? What, what's your key message uh, towards the focal points, for example, that could be conveyed to the higher echelons, the ministries, and so forth in terms of program? We know there's a lot of demand for, these, for this product in, in, in PCD units and that can be placed in... in, in um, in development ministries all over all over Europe and, and throughout your members. So I mean I want to emphasize that this is not an exercise that's going to be done by ECDPM and the OECD, OECD and stay there. So we want to generate as much traction as possible from the donor community because hopefully we, we I mean we would want that methodology to serve to inspire to, to serve as some kind of blueprint for for, for their efforts. So I mean the awareness is key, and we're going to run some um, we're going to run some pilots also to test it and further refine it. Because I mean we can't you know we can spend a lot of time working on this, but until you test it and really see how it works out in the field, we'll never get a, a perfect product. So we're going to do some pilots. Um, we don't have a specific time frame yet, but uh, and and we're willing for people if people have suggestions of countries. Uh, things we could focus on, etc. We would we welcome their suggestions and perhaps working with them and, and, and coordination with them, etc. So, yeah. Maybe you have some preview already what you think will come off in terms of what could be the message for donors to not do or what to do. I mean, my feeling about this is that a lot of the information you'll gather in countries um, either won't be new or perhaps you'll find some things, but I think the bigger problems that are going to come up are definitely already addressed perhaps in some ways or another through or need to be further addressed through global frameworks like the WCO, uh, the OECD, etc. These kind of multilateral frameworks that are born, born out of the recognition that once you do in one country will have impact in other countries and perhaps not the same impact on the same group, etc. So usually, I mean, since for a long time, states have thought of ways to regulate that and we already have a lot of these frameworks. So I think what we're trying to do is to some extent feed the institutional machine and the machinery 
in OECD countries, etc., so that you know countries in their decision making process take better into account uh, the, the impact of, of other when they define their national positions, for example, as OECD or something. They take better into account uh, the effect of, of, of their policies on other countries. That, that's really the, the, the key of the exercise here. Thank you very much. All right, thank you.